today is the twentieth, and this one has the mayor. And if you go up a bit, his hat goes into number two. <laughs> he has the maps. He has the plans for next Halloween. What do you think's in there? I oh, actually, it's not far what I expected. This is like it's like a, like a a bump. I think like a weird. Bump. Maybe it's another book. I like the books. I think they're cool. Well, that came off easy. I don't know. He's thick. Oh, wow. He's really thick. Oh, maybe it's um, paper. Whoa, what is this? What is Ho it? Ho Horse? Oh, Scary Christmas and a Happy Booyah. Oh, it's a little car. Aww. Oh, wait, there's, there's another one in here, actually. I'm. It's. Oh, I think it's a like, like Christmas cards. There's Christmas. There, okay, there's two. Seasons, that's screamings. screamings, and inside ha ha haunted, haunted holidays. So who's that's Zero, the dog, and Jack, and who's that the that's the haunted Teddy. Oh, okay, that was when we did the charade yesterday. Scary. It's the scary. Yeah, it's <laughs> fun. Which you can do even if you haven't seen the movie a million times, right, Jenny? Yep. <laughs> but who won? Me. You did. All right, those are great. Today is the 20th, and we have three chamomile, or chamomile, potato, potato. It says a soothing floral fusion of African, Egyptian, and European chamomile. And to me, chamomile is kind of a light, lighter tea, so it'll be interesting if these are stronger. Let's see if they added any fennel or licorice. But first, sit back on a bed of flowers. Chamomile will help the hours gently flow. And it looks like they did not ruin it and they added just the chamomile flower. So it's mostly African flower, it says 70%, it, then the Egyptian flower is 20%, and then the European flower is just 10%. So let's try this. I'm actually doing this in the morning. Usually I do the teas in the afternoon. So this one will start my morning off right, won't it? Let's see. It smells very good. It smells like chamomile and it has a nice light brown honey color to it. Just kind of what I thought it would taste like chamomile. It's nice. It's nice because <laughs> I've seen, and some of you have pointed out to me, there's some doozies coming up. There's some doozies, but I can do it. I can do this. Cheers. I hadn't been to my favorite Goodwill in a couple days, so I decided to pop in, and they had a whole collection of perfume bottles. These are Egyptian glass perfume bottles and some other bottles, and I decided to get all of them. So here they are in a basket in my cart. They were, last time I was here, it was pretty empty on the shelves, and this time they were restocking, and they were probably about four or five blue bins came rolling out while I was there. So here I am just digging around, seeing if there is anything to be found. I have sold this before. This is a case for a tablet. Um, it would have a strap that goes with it. I actually used it as a purse for a while and, until I got tired of it and sold it. <laughs> And I didn't really find anything too exciting in the bins, so I decided to go look on the shelves. These pottery pieces grabbed my attention. I thought they might be Mexico or Portugal, but I think this one, when I peel the sticker back, the wording reminded me that it might be Greek. I could be completely wrong. I really liked the graphics on this vintage Germany child dish. It sounds like I said child, childish. You're being childish. It's a child dish. <laughs> and this frosted bud vase had some wear to the painted image. So I did put that back. And this was a Andrea by Sadiq. These were plastic. And I was looking to see if I could find a brand name on them. And I could not. And so I left that there. And when I was putting them back, I noticed there was this vintage shoe box and inside it was some baby's bronzed shoes it was very very sweet very sentimental somebody's baby's shoes but i left them for somebody else 
Here was a souvenir glass mug from Cape Cod. And actually when I put it back on the shelf, I realized it was next to a lighthouse. So maybe someone would pick up the lighthouse and the souvenir mug. Continuing on with our nautical theme, I found this probably a board for hanging up your clothes, but there's sharks, which would kind of be a little scary. And there was this pretty purple pedestal dish, candy dish. I'm not sure who the maker was. It was on the large side and I didn't know who the maker was. So I decided to leave that on the shelf. I do pick up things. Don't worry. This, um, I, this was from the nineties and I didn't know who these frogs were. So if you know who these frogs are, please let me know. It was just one single drinking glass. And here was some vintage Rubbermaid Tupperware. But I think that was Tupperware. And I think I pick this up every time I come in. And I put it down every time I come in. And here is a look at the green shelves. It's funny how these shelves were so bare last time I was here a couple days ago. And here they are filled back up again. I thought the color of these, that these might be vintage. But I finally found a maker's mark. And it said made in China. So I did put those three pieces back. And while I was down there... I noticed this piece this was a sewing box caddy I did um, open it up and the top shelf area was plain and then the bottom area had a divided thing for your sewing things <laughs> very detailed description for me this is a dragonware creamer and sugar this was basically a rescue mission because there is a repaired crack on the creamer and the lid does not go to the sugar bowl. It is way too small, but they are vintage. I like how the stickers on both pieces said really old. Um, so I got them mostly for the rescue. See, and then when I took the lid off, I realized this lid probably goes to a teapot or something. So I like them. Um, I like Dragonware, so I decided to rescue those. And this is really cool. This is a paint by number. If you look closely at the design, there's numbers on there. And I did some quick, quick research, and I couldn't find one anywhere. So I have the only one in the world. It's one of a kind. <laughs> and then in the same area were these two pedestal elephant. Um, they're described as dip dishes or for dips. They're by World Market. I thought they were really cute. The one does have two small chips, but I think as a pair, they would make a nice gift for somebody. And I don't know why I picked this up. I just, I liked it. I like quails. I like the bird. I like how it had gold on it. I liked how someone put felt on the bottom. And then I was walking by and I found this monster size cloisonne vase. Now it has the sticker made in China, so it's not super duper old. But there is a sparkle to the black background. And I've really looked at this to see if it really is cloisonne. I'm not quite sure. But it is a big, really pretty vase. Just the same. And here we are in the white section. I always save this section for last because it's kind of on the boring side. But I did like that coffee mug. There is no doubt what was in that mug. And then this was a very large, I think it was um, chalkware or some time some type of material like that it was a big wall thing to hang on your wall of a cafe it was very large and here was a more modern pottery piece the date on it was 05 it looks like and with the holes on the side i would think that you would put potpourri in that i think and then i needed to see what was in this bag and there were some angels and so I put those back and then they had this stack of China. So there were these pieces here and it had an England mark on it. You can see the end of England right there. And then I wanted to see what those different shape plates were. And it turns out these are made um, by false graph. There's a whole bunch of them, but I left those there. And then, whoa! I was like, what? I'd never seen a Smurf stitchery kit before. And I love the Smurfs. So I decided to take that, even though the red hoop is missing, that's an easy fix for whoever wants it, but the kit is complete. And I thought this was a sweet little trinket dish. They were miniature collectible 
plates and oh and then an egg coddler and I did pick up this egg coddler it's in a June Garland pattern by Royal Worcester and I have other egg coddlers so I think I'll put those together and sell them as a lot I think that might give me three large egg coddlers and here was someone's Hard Rock Cafe collection so I thought you might want to see the whole collection Someone did some traveling and then this I immediately when I saw this thought oh this is a railroad piece and it is the South Jersey line and this was the last thing I found is a beautiful soft jointed pink bunny rabbit and it is called Charlie's Bear Charlie's Bears Charlie's Bears Charlie Bears and this is pear drop and that was our trip to the Goodwill. I hope you liked it. The dogs have decided to eat their breakfast and Indy is having her early morning nap. <laughs> if you hear any snoozing or chomping, right? Charlie, you want to come say hi? Charlie just finished his breakfast, so he decided to join me. He's the boss. Oh, excuse you. <laughs> He's the boss of the pack. And isn't that usually how it is? The smallest one is the loudest one he likes to keep everybody in line but when you hold him then all of a sudden he becomes so docile and calm and then you put him down and he'll go yell right in your ear so he's a good boy aren't you char yes he's a good boy all right i'm going to talk about tamales right. so i made the tamales yesterday and i'll insert a picture of them cooking on the stove here And I'm always worried that they're not going to turn out how my mom used to make them. So when I was first married and I lived, I've lived in Pennsylvania my whole married life. And my mom was still in California and she used to make them and then freeze them and then mail them to me. And they always got to us in a timely manner because it's all, it's always colder here in Pennsylvania. So she would put, oh, Susie wants to come. She would always put ice packs in the packages and stuff, and they always turned out great. So I never had to make them because, oh, <laughs> you can tell they all just finished their breakfast. <laughs> Excuse you. Um, so she would make them, and I didn't have to make them. And then it was probably maybe seven years ago, my mom said, you need to learn how to do this because I can't always be mailing you tamales in the mail. And so... I did it with her, stood by her, and watched her do it, and uh, it's time-consuming for those of you who have made them before, but it's rewarding, and we've always had tamales on Christmas Eve ever since I was, I can remember, we've always had tamales on Christmas Eve, and the story was is that my mom's family moved from Minnesota to Arizona, and they were used to lefsa, and there's no lefsa in Arizona, or it's not abundant. So they learned to eat tortillas with butter and sugar. And she had a neighbor lady who would make tamales. And she showed my mom how to make tamales. And she always put an olive inside the tamale. So my mom always put an olive inside the tamale. And I always put olives inside my tamales. And I remember one Christmas, we were sitting, it was Christmas Eve, and I opened up my tamales. <clears throat> And I had two olives and one tamale. And I said, Mom, what does this mean? What does this mean? And she's like, oh, that means you don't have to clear the dishwasher today. You got the special tamale. So that was always the joke from then on out that if you got two olives in your tamale, you didn't have to do your chores of clearing the dishwasher. <laughs> but what it turned out is my mom was just like in the you know mood of in the zone of making the tamales and she just threw in two. So of course this year I threw in two just to throw people off. <laughs> so this is the cookbook, the original cookbook that she gave me. And it, ha it has um, a lot of her notes on the tamale section. And it has the phone number for the tortilla factory, which used to be in uh, Tucson. I, I believe they're closed now. And you could uh, get prepared masa. So I, have to make my masa and that's what makes it a little bit of a challenge here in Pennsylvania because it's not like I can just go down to the grocery store and get prepared masa 
So if anyone knows in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, where I can find prepared masa, please let me know in the comments below because I would really appreciate it. Some of you have also asked, can you share the tamale recipe? It simply is just pork and uh, we cook it and my mom would get the Santa Cruz chili paste and that was out of uh, Tucson and it might not be in Tucson right now. It might be near Tucson. And I did get the Ch Santa Cruz chili paste in years past, but with nowadays the shipping is just crazy. So this year we did go and do something a little different. We went and found red chili uh, sauce. And so I did use that in the tamales. And so they do have a little bit of a different taste than what we're used to because of the chili sauce, but I think it will be okay. <laughs> and I won't worry too much about how they taste. And I also wanted to share with you, for those of you who are interested, when my mom was showing me how to spread the masa on the oja, that um, it's hard to like get a consistent spread, especially when you're first starting. So we looked it up online as one does and this was sold as a masa spreader I'm trying to make there it is and it had these two little ridges right here and that kind of keeps you an even consistency and it's kind of just like when you plaster a wall but you're plastering your corn husk and this is you use it once a year but it's a valuable tool Today is the 21st. It's the first day of winter. And fun fact, I rewatched Never Christmas Day yesterday. <laughs> Just to do a refresher. Yeah. Who is that? Who is that? That is a toy that Halloween Town created. It was a, it's a haunted teddy. Oh, uh, okay. It's based, I think it's supposed to be based off of Mickey Mouse because of the little oh, ears that it has. Mickey look I don't know. I just kept saying like haunted Mickey Mouse doll for a minute because it just looks like it. What do you think's in there? It feels You can hear great. all the dogs in the background. Yeah, because they want to be quiet. <laughs> any snorting or <laughs> is the dogs, not us. Mostly Indy. Okay. What do you so think's in there? It feels a bit squishy right here. It feels a bit flat. Well, it's a little squishy. All right, let's, oh, it feels squishy. Maybe there's stickers. Oh, I hope there's stickers. Oh, there's Indy. That was her shape. That was her. None of us shake like <laughs> her that. jowls. Oh, what are these? These are stickers. Oh. Ah. There's only two of them. They're like puffy stickers. Oh, they're puffy. That's what I was feeling. We have Oogie Boogie and, of course, Jack. Can you flip them over so you can see the back? Ah. They're like button stickers. Like button stickers. I like these because they're just fun to squish. Today is the 21st and it is called Cleanse, a radiant blend of fennel, nettle, and peppermint. This year, it's the show that we named as the Fennel Anthem Calendar. <laughs> fennel, <laughs> fennel Calendar, Licorice Calendar. Let's see, here is a tea of cool mint green, sparkle and glow with a Christmas sheen. And it looks like. It is 40% nettle leaf, 25% peppermint leaf, 24.5% sweet fennel seed, dandelion root, licorice root, and aloe vera inner leaf. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Jenny, you want me to make you a cup? No. Here's the mug. It's Aladdin. <laughs> it's going to show you a horrible taste. <laughs> going to show me a horrible taste. Hmm. You can taste the peppermint. I don't know what, I've never had nettle before. I don't think I've purposely had nettle. This goes in the garden category of, I feel like, yeah, I know. <laughs> Susie's like, that's horrible. <laughs> she likes anything. She'll eat it because I'm food. I don't think I'm going to take this one. No. Cheers. Here is everything I found on this trip to Goodwill. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. And I'll see ya.